Welcome everyone to this very, very special edition of Voices of Reynolds, celebrating the college's 50th anniversary and even more than that, our namesake. We have got such a special guest today. We have Matt West, author of A Time for Moderation, J. Sergeant Reynolds in Virginia's New Democrats, 1960 to 1971. This is a wonderful book. Matt, I happen to be in the Reynolds room at our downtown campus. So it's, it's so fitting that we are together talking this way. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And I tell you, when I read it, I learned something new about Sarge Reynolds. I learned a lot of, of new things about Sarge Reynolds, but this is someone, J. Sergeant Reynolds, our, our college's namesake, knew something about creating a syllabus. He knew about grading tests and exams because he was a, a, a faculty member. He was a professor for a short time at the University of Richmond. That's right. He was. He, he went to the University of Pennsylvania to complete his undergraduate degree and uh, studied at the Wharton School there. And not long after graduating, came back to Richmond, of course, began working uh, for his family's company, the Reynolds Metals Company, but on the side began teaching economics at the University of Richmond. Uh, I imagine he was quite popular among his students being a 20-something year old professor and having come pretty fresh out of college himself. So not long after he began teaching at the University of Richmond, he decided to make his first foray into politics, at least as a candidate for elected office. In 1965, decided to run for the House of Delegates um, out of the floater district in Richmond, which was essentially a multi-member district that comprised Richmond and, and neighboring Henrico County and elected a total of eight members to the House of Delegates. Now, before 1965, he had already been quite active in democratic politics. He had worked on many campaigns, both at the local level in the Richmond area and also statewide, and uh, was, again, quite active in the Democratic Party already. But 1965 marked the first time as a 29-year-old uh, that he actually took that, that next step and, and tried to run for office himself. Both education and, I think, equality of opportunity more generally were real motivating forces in his political life and two of the factors that really motivated him to run for political office. I and, you know, that theme runs throughout his political career, runs throughout the book. Um, this commitment to opportunity, commitment to education, and, and these messages that he sends to, to young people, some quite prophetic, you know, get in there, get civically engaged, get your, uh, let your voice be heard. I mean, it's, it's interesting how that theme runs throughout Sarge's life and throughout his political career too. Definitely, and, and taking a step back to look at the national scene during this era, of course, he first ran for office in 65 and would later be elected Lieutenant Governor in 1969. And this was a period of, of great tur turmoil across the nation. You think of the 1968 election and the riots in Chicago during the Democratic National Convention, um, the protests over Vietnam, the summer of love. You know, This was a period where um, America's youth were really rising up and uh, becoming politically active in, in a very public facing way. And Reynolds, during this time, I think, wanted to be sure that he was speaking directly to Virginia's youth and encouraging them to be politically active, but in the way that he thought would be most productive. He was very much a pragmatist and believed that young Virginians like himself, um, could best affect change by becoming part of the political system, by running for office, by participating in campaigns, helping others get elected who, who shared their views. And um, so I would, I would call him an institutionalist, but he was a progressive one and did, did his best during his time in office to set an example, but also to um, try to motivate and inspire young Virginians to become politically active themselves. Mm, yes. And the story of Sarge Reynolds' ascendancy is, is also the, the story of a rising, a growing um, political influence and, and power of African-American voters. And you devote some, uh, some great ink in your book talking about the crusade for voters. Can you tell us a little bit about this group, why they were influential um, give us a little context about the crusade for voters and Sarge Reynolds. Absolutely. Um, so you have to remember through the first half and more of the 20th century, 
Virginia's ruling class, primarily the conservative Democrats under the leadership of Harry Byrd, who was a longtime senator and before that had been governor, were really dedicated to suppressing voter participation in the state. They were very conservative economically, um, low taxes, low public spending. And part of the reason they were able to pursue those policies for so long was that hardly anyone in Virginia voted. Uh, and that really stems back to the infamous 1902 constitution where um, convention delegates did everything they could to strip the vote from black Americans as well as many low income white voters as well. Um, so that provides a little bit of context and, and really is the reason why up until the early 60s, um, there weren't really opportunities for, for black Virginians to participate in, in large numbers in politics and, and specifically to vote. And the Crusade for Vot uh, Voters was formed in the Richmond area in the late 1950s as a measure uh, of combating that. And it was dedicated to providing grass grassroots advocacy organization to, for instance, um, hold voter registration drives to ensure that Black Virginians in the Richmond area understood how to add their names to the voter rolls. A uh, big part of that was paying uh, poll taxes, which was a huge deterrent to voter participation primarily because they had to be paid so far in advance of an actual election. And the crusade, again, organized in the Richmond area to try to ensure that voters had that information to, to ensure that they um, could become eligible to vote. And they were very successful. Uh, and through the early 60s, uh, succeeded in adding several thousand Black Virginians uh, to the rolls in Richmond and um, became more of a force through the 1960s as uh, the federal poll tax was repealed through the 24th Amendment and later through federal court action, the state poll tax was uh, repealed. Uh, during the, the early to mid 1960s, you saw tens of thousands of black Virginians finally get an opportunity to vote. Um, and Reynolds, for his part, you know, he, he wasn't a leader in this effort by any means. I, I don't want to portray him as such, but he was very much involved in supporting the Crusades work uh, in the Richmond area, helping out with their voter registration drives and some more of those grassroots activities to, to ensure that uh, as many Virginians who were qualified to vote uh, could, could show up on election day and, and cast their ballots. Thank you, Matt. It's been so great having you on. Congratulations on the success of A Time for Moderation. And I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to this edition of Voices of Reynolds as we celebrate the college's 50th anniversary. We'll catch you next time.